Hello, how are you doing? And welcome back to the channel. So Ireland against France, what I think is one of the biggest Six Nations games there has been in years. The world number one side, Ireland, against the world number two side, France. So looking forward to this one happening tomorrow on Saturday, recording this on Friday night. But this is my preview of the game. So do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video and also drop a comment down below. How do you see this game going? Do you think Ireland are going to pinch it being at home? Or do you think France can go into Dublin and once again beat Andy Farrell's men? Let me know in the comments down below. All right, let's get into it. I guess it's a difficult question to answer, isn't it, of is this the biggest Six Nations game we've had in years? Because over the years, you can look back at certain matches in the championship. I mean, Ireland heading to the Stade de France in last year's championship was a huge game and against two top quality sides. I look back to when England went to Dublin with the Grand Slam on the line and lost, or when England went to Cardiff with the Grand Slam on the line and lost. So there has been huge contests during the Six Nations, but I do think it's significant that... It's the world number one side against the world number two side. Something that hasn't happened before in the Six Nations. A competition that whilst it's been the best competition overall in terms of rugby union, it hasn't necessarily always had the best sides. That was always the rugby championship with the Springboks, the All Blacks, Australia and everyone else. That has now changed. If you want to look at this Ireland side and this French side, they have beaten everyone in the world over the last few years. The exception for Andy Farron and Ireland is France. It's the one team Andy Farrell hasn't beaten since he took over as the Ireland head coach after the World Cup in 2019. And also, France are the only side to win in Dublin uh, against Ireland since the 2019 World Cup. That was in the 2021 Six Nations. So France have been able to get the better of them, but I think it's going to be a different story this weekend, possibly. Um, I'm going to go through bits of team news. I'm not going to go through full team news. The teams were announced yesterday, so I'd imagine by this point, most of you would have seen the, the sides in full. Uh, the kind of one, one news line, really, from an Irish perspective, is that Dan Sheehan, uh, with a hamstring injury, drops out. So I think he's a really, really big loss, been playing so well. He's replaced by Rob Herring, and then Ronan Kelleher comes onto the bench. So it's good to see him back on the bench and adds a bit more strength in depth to that squad. But I do think it's a shame to see Dan Sheehan drop out. I was really looking forward to the head-to-head -head of him against Julian Marchand. I think Marchand, I, last year I had Marchand uh, at hooker for my world 15 of the year. I think he was that good for France. And Sheehan has been outstanding for Ireland as well. So I think it's a shame we're not going to see that matchup. But overall for Ireland, it's a pretty consistent side, isn't it? If you if you want to look at the, where Andy Farrell has gone. Um, and they do have injuries to contend with at the moment, but it's a good test of the depth of their squad, which is something I think Andy Farrell himself has referenced in the build-up to this game of you get to a World Cup and if someone has to go through concussion protocols and that's 12 days out or you lose guys to red cards, whatever it might be, but looking ahead to the World Cup, it's good practice to have to contend with some of your frontline stars out. So from that point of view, worrying for Ireland maybe, but actually it's a challenge that I think they are relishing. Uh, as for France, unchanged starting 15. There's been a couple of changes on the bench though. Francois Crow and Baptiste Couliou both coming in. So as I say, I won't run through the full 15s because I'd imagine most of you have already seen them by now, uh, given that when this video is coming out. But I do think it's a really intriguing prospect for a game. Um, as for France, I mentioned if this is one of the biggest Six Nations games in years, is this one of the biggest tests that France have faced as well since Fabien Gaultier came in? I guess you could look back at when they hosted the All Blacks at the Stade de France, but again, that was at home. Uh, their Six Nations Grand Slam last year, they played England at home, they played Ireland at home. I know they've beaten South Africa and Australia at home, but in terms of going on the road, going away to Dublin, this is as big a test as I think France have faced since Fabien Gaultier came in after the World Cup in 2019, has done it brilliant job him Sean Edwards the rest of that setup in France have been outstanding I think this is a different challenge they face this weekend because I think Ireland are playing that well at this moment in time and France actually they've been winning but how good have their performances been if you want to look at the end of the autumn if you want to look at their performance against Italy I think France have to step up I think they will and I think it will be a really tough contest but I just think Ireland are playing so well at the moment that it's going to be really, really tough for the French. 
When I look at the, the Irish team as well, I mean, you, you, Gary Ringrose and McCloskey in the centres are just so solid. You know what their back three are going to bring of Lowe, Hanson, Keenan. Sexton at 10 is absolutely huge for Ireland. And I actually wonder at this moment in time, if you went through it man to man. So, for example, if I said to you Cyril Bailly or Andrew Porter, I'd go for Cyril Bailly. I think many of you would be the same. If you went through the starting 15s, I think there's a good chance that just man for man, one on one, not looking at the whole team element, but looking at the players individually, you might pick more French players than you would Irish players. But as a collective, as a system, Ireland are playing far better at the moment. The way they're attacking, their attacking shape, their defence, so much of what they do is to a really, really high standard. And, and I think better than what we've seen from France in their recent games, as I mentioned. So it's a really intriguing match from that point of view. I think I've said on this channel already with France, I mean, they're on a record-breaking run. They won every game in 2022. They beat Italy last weekend despite not playing that well. I just wonder whether they are due a slight dip whether they're finally going to be beaten this weekend. And from this point, they'll try and build themselves back up towards a World Cup on home soil. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Um, but regardless of how France are playing or how Ireland are playing, I thought this was a great stat I saw, actually. The only sides to beat 30 or more defenders in round one of the Six Nations last weekend were Ireland and France. And the only sides to miss fewer than 20 tackles in round one of the Six Nations last weekend were Ireland and France. These are the two best teams in the competition. And all right, those are just two individual stats. I'm so, sure there's other statistical categories where they're not one and two. But I thought it was quite an intriguing, a little opening of that these are the two best sides in the competition. And this is a brilliant, brilliant game. Where is it going to be won and lost, really? Well, I think to oversimplify things, you can boil it down to the penalty count. France penalised a huge amount of times against Italy. I actually thought some of the officiating was quite favourable to the Italians. But despite that, Sean Edwards, the French defence coach, came out after the game and said he's never had a defence penalised as often as that. Something I'll have to look at and something I'll have to speak to the officials about. And likewise, the Ireland setup has spoken about their penalty count in the second half against Wales, allowing Wales to not necessarily get back in the game, but Wales did have field position and did have opportunities in the second half of that game in Cardiff. They just weren't able to capitalise on them. So Ireland are going to look at that as well and say their discipline has to be key. For both sides, they can't give up field position. They can't give up territory because... Both of them, when they get the chance, are pretty good at being ruthless when it does emerge. So that's where I think it's going to be a really, really key battle. But as I say, I think it's going to be a brilliant game. Personally, as I've said all along this Six Nations, Ireland are going to be the champions in my view. But basically because this game is played in Dublin, actually, or, or big reason for that, I think home advantage for Ireland at this moment in time is key. And I also do think that it's a French side who haven't been as superb in the end of last autumn and in the first game of this Six Nations as we have seen them be previously. So that's why I'm going for an Ireland victory. Having said that, France will know they have to be better. They have to be, they have to be better physically. They have to be in a better mental place. They have to improve their all-round game if they are to win this weekend. So I do think it will be tight. But overall... I'm going to give it to Ireland. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. How excited are you for this game and who wins, Ireland or France? Subscribe to the channel, like the video, and I'll see you in the next one.